Beautiful. I am so excited. So excited. Are you guys ready? You guys ready to tell your story to the yeah. world? Yeah. I'm excited. All right. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh let's let's finish this strong. This is uh this is of course the finale of the Forsaken Takeover. I'm your host, Anthony. With me today, I have the ones who were uh, the best way to describe it is is just don't fear the reaper. You know, that's that's your guys' theme song. <laughs> like that's it. We had the reapers right here from Forsaken. Like we have Sage, we have Joey. How you guys doing today? <laughs> there it is. We're doing great. <laughs> I'm great. The pure excitement. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for for being on the show today and and being part of the Forsaken Takeover. This was uh, something that we've said time and time again on the show this month, but this was a very, very strong year for Forsaken Lake. Uh, probably the strongest I've ever seen it. Uh, how does it feel to be a part of that? I mean, that that you guys really took something and then made it into like an Avengers Endgame type level of something. Like, how, how do you guys feel yeah. about that? That you guys should be proud for that. Yeah, it's honestly been really awesome, which honestly, thank you again for having like the whole like takeover kind of a marathon. Yeah. Super appreciative of that. And like all of the lake is like, we love you and we're super excited. But um, no, this year was like, honestly amazing. I don't know. It was so much fun. And like, Everyone just like really killed it out there. And this was my first year, but this was Joey's second year, which that was the first time we've had uh, th two years consecutively with a Reaper. Or Yeah. So this was my second year in Forsaken. I am actually the only male Reaper to return to the lake consecutively two years in a row. Every other year, it's been someone new. They have constantly changed out. So I'm the only one to come back. But Getting to be in a street zone in general during the 50th, oh, that was a blast. Oh my goodness, yeah. Especially somewhere like Forsaken, where it was just nuts all season from go. It was just a nonstop moving train. It's either you get on or you're getting left at the station. And I am so glad I got yeah. to have Sage as my running partner this year, because last year... Everybody was brand new. Last season, everyone was brand new to the lake. And so coming back and being the only returning Reaper, period, because all the other ones left, because there was only three Reapers last season. And then this year, I got to have four. I got to find a running partner through doing it. I was like, yes! <laughs> Oh man. yeah, yeah. I mean the the excitement behind that. I mean, you you realize you just you just cemented your name in a history book right there of of being the only Reaper to return two time back to back. Um, to that, hopefully three next year. Hopefully oh, three, three times. Hopefully three because hopefully. the female Reapers have had a tendency to play it two years in a row back to back mm -hmm. and then switch off. The male Reapers have just been changing constantly. But if I go back this third year, I am going to be the longest running Reaper in the zone's history, period. So mm. I'm like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> you, and I, you and I will have a lot in common at that point. You know, you'll be in a three-time Reaper. I'm a three-time Try Not to Get Scared champion. You know, it, it's, it, we're going to celebrate next year is what, what, what I'm hearing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to celebrate next year, you know, and, and, you know, I even may give you a shot at the title because now you're, you're matching me. And I, you know, I only, you know, I only, I only defend against greatness. So, you know, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I have to say, I mean, you know, I, and I've been saying it all month that, you know, there was just something different about Forsaken Lake this year, you know, and I know that the 50th was a factor of it, but you know, just in general, um, you know, I found it funny in our first podcast to find out that, um, I kind of had by Lex, I had a target painted on my back to try to persuade me into uh you know giving forsaken like a higher ranking when we did the review for the 50th and uh you know it it, it was definitely something when when sammy and i come out on the on these on these episodes and, and and talk about how much time we we would go through and and spend time there more than previous years so what was you know in your opinion like the biggest like how to say kind of like you know a lot of people had said one thing about the zone what was it that you were like we're gonna show everyone that we are the fucking zone and we are gonna do it with pride like what was it that like 
ticked all you guys because like there was i mean they, they, there was just so much energy i saw people firecracking darting everywhere and i mean even the even the procession was just so spot on like what was it what, what, what how do you mentally prepare for something like that and and, and get in the zone for that you don't <laughs> you get, you'll wing it but i think for this year especially we had a lot of um i feel like there's a lot of like new people like they like like this was like their first year on Streets, some, we had uh, our other female Reaper. It was her literally her first year at not in general. It was her first year haunting in Yeah, haunting She had never well. haunted before this. And then yeah. they were like, here's a Reaper position. And she's like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, with everyone being new to the zone, and I think um, for me, like hearing, like, because this is my second year at not, but hearing from other people, like, oh, Forsaken's kind of like the, like the not so good zone or like people like not talking great or being like, Oh, that's like the worst zone. And it doesn't help, but like you kind of have to go out of your way to go find forsaken lakes sometimes. Cause there's not like a maze that's attracted to it. It's kind of like an out of the way spot. And so I think um, everyone was just kind of like determined to be like, well, screw you guys for uh, thinking we're like the worst zone. We're just going to have fun and do what we want and just like enjoy ourselves. No one was really upset for being in Forsaken Lake. Honestly, everyone in the zone was like excited to be there and was just happy to be working hot and like working on a street and then working alongside everyone else. And we just literally like sparked a fire in each everyone's butts. And like, we were just like bouncing off of each other constantly. Like everyone worked together to make that zone as fun as it was. And no one was like alone in that place. <laughs> I was gonna say just the comments and the feedback about <laughs> the zone lit a fire under my ass. Cause I was like last year, I thought I was like really aggressive and I had a lot of fun like last year. And then people were like, Oh, well forsaken was forsaken. It was really good this year, but like it could still be better. I was like, Oh, watch me bitch <laughs> and i was i see how it is i'm like you want to rank my zone on the bottom <laughs> came, so yeah it, it came full circle man really came, full circle. Full, came full circle full circle came full mm -hmm. circle yeah i am proud yeah, sure. i am i am proud that i was wrong about this year i am proud of that statement because the fact that i was wrong makes me excited to go to haunt every year the the fact that i i go in expecting one thing and come out expecting a and then come out seeing a whole different thing just makes me proud that i was wrong because i was like holy shit i don't know what these guys are drinking i don't know what they're eating i don't know what is going on backstage but when they come out of those doors when they come on stage and when they perform these characters it is some of the most surreal shit I've ever seen in my life. And this really brings the story to life. And I love it. I mean, I was getting yelled at in my ear. People were constantly getting me, juking me, you know, I mean, and, and just the interactions we would have with people. I mean, it, it was just such a, an amazing time. I, I think it was just, like I said, it was super special because, you know, you had the 50th going on, you know, everyone's there to, to celebrate the, the 50 years of this iconic event that really kickstarted the theme park uh, haunt scene. And, you know, it, it, it's it's so cool that to, to know that you two, you know, got to play these Reapers and get to be a part of that, you know, and, and to be a part of history. Now you guys are officially in the books for the 50th anniversary. When we look back 50 years, you know, later, you know, it's going to be like one of those things where it's like, yo, do you remember, though, that one year like Forsaken Lake was like on fucking fire for the 50th? Like, because I was there, you know, like I'll be telling my grandchildren, be like, yeah, this zone's cool, but you should have been here 50th anniversary Forsaken Lake. That's where it was. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that my grandchildren's grandchildren will be telling stories about Forsaken. Like, I will make sure of that. Um, the swamp water will always be remembered. It <laughs> so they're like, we don't know what was in the lake water during the 50th, but it was something. It was popping. Man. <laughs> it was popping. It was popping. No, it was good. Now, <laughs> I have to talk to you because you guys are now this. This is the first time either of you have been on the show. So now I gotta I gotta go back and and kind of learn the haunt history between uh, how it got how you got kickstarted into this world. This is a a fun crazy world to be in. Uh, a lot of great people. A lot of great uh, events. You name it, the the haunt scene, the horror scene is where it's at, and especially in Southern California. I can't, I can't, you know, Southern California is where it's at. Um, talk to me, uh, Joey. We'll start with you. What was it that um, 
that drove you into this world and made you want to become a, a, a scare actor? Okay, for me to kind of spark notes everything, I went to Haunt in 2015, my first year ever with my dad, because actually Boots is a friend of his and Boots was one of the Deadly Seven that year. And like, well, you've been wanting to go for the last two years, so fuck it. He took me and we walked down Fog Alley and I was shitting a brick. <laughs> I was like, I was like, no, there's no way. I was like, there's no way I could do this. And then eventually I went through my first maze, which was Pinocchio. And I came out, I was like, that was so cool. Well, oh, that was so cool. And then what lit the fire to be like, oh yeah, I, I want to do this. I want to do this and people, this is fun. And then every year since I would like dress up in my front yard as a, like a random monster and I would pretend to be a decoration. And then I would charge at people. There was a pregnant woman that came up one Halloween. I almost made her give birth on the sidewalk. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you're not even, hold on. You're not even in Not Scary Farm yet. And I'm hearing a story of you literally almost giving birth in front of your sidewalk. That is probably, that's a first for this show, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so I almost made a woman give birth on my sidewalk because she was like eight months pregnant and she was walking around to like help induce labor. And I was like, well, I'm glad I helped a little. <laughs> and then gave it that actual oomph. <laughs> gave it that little extra oomph. And then um, my sophomore year of high school, I did my first haunted maze inside with our theater program. And then that's when I kind of started haunting a little bit more. And then I just did it every year after. I did it my junior year at the same school. And then my senior year, which was 2020. So that was the Yay. pandemic year. <laughs> yep, I got to I got to do a pandemic haunt. I was working one of the only full walkthrough haunts at that time. Let's go. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. I was working at Hollow's Eve Haunt in Corona in 2020, and that no was shit. a shit ton of fun. Yeah, I, I was went through that in, like a few times too. I was in the Black Light Church room. I was the one in the gray half mouse that was crawling over the church pews and then doing back bends off of them. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. You've no. been crazy ever since. I've been crazy <laughs> since day one. Oh my god, that's awesome. Cause like we uh that was one of the things that we we constantly praised on the channel during 2020 was Corona Haunt for doing that. You know, like that was a huge one for that one, you know. So I mean, thank you for being part of that. Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun. I was like, I'm glad I still just get to haunt in general. And then in 21, the auditions for KSF came up. And I was like, do I do it? And then everybody in my life is like, if you don't do it, we will beat you within an inch of your life. So I went and those were the years we had the self-tape audition. We, I sent it in a week later. They're like, hey, we want to do an interview with you. And then I walk in, they're like, okay, great. So we want to offer you the role of Mort the Skeleton. I'm like, uh-huh. I was like, who, who the hell is Mort the Skeleton? <laughs> and then- the fuck is Mort? <laughs> the fuck is Mort? Can you I the joke was just King Julian, let me touch your hand. <laughs> and I thought I was like, are we getting like was are we Madagascar getting that kind of a theme freaking maze? KSF? I was like, okay. I'm like, I'm not gonna complain, but I guess I'm, that's how you treated that skeleton. The maze, I did. The maze would have been called uh Madagascar after hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh whoa, well, well, Madagascar after hours nightmare. After hours <laughs> but, yeah, nightmare, there um, you go. Music by the weekend. So there you go. Mostly by the weekend. What it ended up actually being was I ended up being Mortimer Mesmer in Mesmer its opening oh, year. That, so oh. I was the cast a clock skeleton its opening year. I was like <sighs> so I got to open a maze my first year, and that was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Uh, yeah. And then I did that the entire year. And then the next year, they had us all re-audition for 2022, and that's when I went into Forsaken Lake, and I have been there ever since. There it is. I mean, hey, listen, you were part of easily one of my favorite mazes of 2021, which was Mesmer. I mean, I was just blown away <laughs> by that maze when I walked through it. I was just like, this is like taking acid without taking acid. Like, that's what this is.
Like maybe the, maybe the guy who created it was on something because there's just no way. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> there's just no way you make a maze that freaking creepy. I'm like, you've seen one too many Cirque du Soleil shows, and I applaud it. Oh, oh, it was bad ass. Yeah. And then when they walk me to my spot, and they're like, "So your character?" Um, because they gave me my costume. I was like, apparently, the essentially the Grim Reaper, which I find very ironic because now I play a Reaper. So just in a skeletal cloaked robe, I'm like, what the hell do I do? And they're like, oh, by the way, um, your clock, watch. Oh, Damn. and they launched it on the track. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I was 18 years old at the time. I was like, I get to throw shit. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so fun. It was so fun. I loved being a Mesmer. I loved being a Mesmer. Mesmer's so good. Uh, Sage, I want to hear a little bit about your haunt background. I mean, uh, you uh you you were you're killing it this year. You guys as the Reapers, by the way. I mean, you guys were honestly some of the most memorable moments I have in that zone this year. Um <laughs> you know, uh let, talk to me about your your background. How did it all begin for you? Yeah, so um he definitely has a better resume than me. <laughs> Clearly. Um, so funnily enough, um, I've never done Honk before either, really, besides in 2022 with KSF. Um, but I've been ever since I was like younger, I don't know why, I've just always been interested in the horror genre. I also like somehow kept accidentally getting pushed into CSI classes, like at a way too young age. <laughs> Weirdly enough, it's kind of <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But, best. like, I, the best way I can explain it is that a 13-year-old seeing, like, a real dead body. <laughs> there it is. CSI, man. That's what it's all about. So, yeah. So, <laughs> listen, I don't know what th that teacher's acid was on, but <laughs> it was a lot. So, I, I've always just kind of been into it and, like, always doing stuff. And, like, my, when I was, like, younger, I wanted to kind of be a mortician Um, when I got older. And then um, I kind of realized, hmm, maybe not like that requires a lot of like calculations and stuff um which but, neither of us have oh okay. no, 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 no no as you can see there's nothing in here um but no so ever since i was younger i've just been in the horror genre and my family always i always wanted to go to like these haunts when i discovered them during halloween and i loved going into like the haunted mansions and, and like like on like blocks or whatever and then my family started taking me to stuff like this uh fright fest um the um not scary farm and then like i think there's like a couple other ones that i don't even remember the names of but i just remembered we constantly would go to like new places um and my memory is kind of as well i say kind of as a nice way <laughs> listen <laughs> i'm gonna be nice about it i'm gonna shut my mouth <laughs> i don't have good memory but i always loved going to um haunts and i always remembered like hearing like the cool sounds that the monsters made or watching them slide across like the concrete and like the sparks everywhere. And I thought that was the coolest fucking thing ever. And I wanted to go in as soon as like I was 18, just immediately go into haunt. And then I just kind of like, I forgot about it almost and just kind of like did other things with my life and kept going through like different aspects of it. Um, and then like randomly I was at the gym with my mom and my sister and it was my first time going to this gym. And the guy working there, my mom like was just asking, like, hey, how are you doing? Like, uh, how's your day been? And he's like, oh, good. I just applied to Not Scary Farm. And my mom just went. <laughs> like, That's a sign. Like, she was like, oh, my daughter. I was like, mom, no, wait, please. And she was like, my daughter wants to go. And he was like, oh, I can send you the audition info if you would like. Oh, and I was that's like, so funny. I was like, yeah, sure. You know what? Why not? So he <laughs> sent me, like, the Instagram post. And then in 2022, I joined, um, I think I was a little bit later. I want to say it might have been like um, like August or September is when I applied or something. Oh. So I, had, I applied a little bit later than most. And I got, funnily enough, I got into Dark Entities, also yes. the worst like maze that everyone no, like, crashes. Not. No, it's not. It's the best maze ever, and I will stand by I, it. That maze scares the shit out of me every single time. That maze is great. I I I kind of I like it, but like every time I told people what maze it's I was in, they're like, great. "Oh, it's great! It's great!" Oh, um, I still believe they should have given the gun technology to 
freaking dark you. enemies. Honestly, that would be so good. Yeah. A million no, fantasies would have came to life. Right? But no, I, like, I, I knew, like, people, like, everyone would always, like, apologize to me whenever they heard I was in dark enemies. Like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that kind of thing. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, kind of like how people treat a Forsaken Lake. Wait, I hate to show them this year. Yeah, I have a track record. I have a track record of scraping the bottom of the barrel. Hey, listen. No, I'm you kidding. can't even say that about Forsaken this year because y'all killed that shit. I can't. No, on top of the barrel. Um, fresh apples. Fresh apples. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I like everyone would say that, but like in Dark Entities, even then, like. I was in uh, cast A, and, like, I remember my group, we were just excited to be in Haunt. Like, we didn't care what people were saying. We were just, like, really hyped about it, and we just loved doing Haunt. And we were like, eh, the costumes are kind of shit, but this is cool. <laughs> and so, like, I remember watching, like, the managers during, like, um, scare school, like, show us how to duo scare and double scare and, like, how to scare in general. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and I got... I I'm... I'm very happy for the position I got, which I got put as, like, the very first monster in the maze, um, which they Thanks. scrapped a lot of the monsters in that beginning area where there's, like, nothing really creepy yet. It's more, like, all clean. And then right. you get on the ship, and then shit hits the fan. Um, and I got to scare in that area and really make it my own jungle gym. And I got to make some really good friends there, and we had some amazing bouncing scares of, like, we made that our meat grinder practically in that area. And then I got the privilege as well as to being one of the few people that was allowed to scare around the entire maze. Um, my manager would constantly um, move us from different areas and put us in new places. And I don't know. I No one really likes... A lot of people aren't the biggest fan of Dark Entities, but I, I liked it. It's like... It's like a guilty pleasure in like the back of my heart. Uh, and every time I see it, I'm always like, oh, it's so fun to scare in there. I kind of want to scare in there again. Um, hey, listen, and I'll, then, I'll tell you this yeah. real quick. Dark entities, okay? You can ask Dark Sammy. Dark you, 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 I mean, you, you can ask Sammy. He said it. He's yeah. put me on blast on this. He loves walking through with that because the creatures in that damn maze terrify the shit out of me. And they make me feel it's uncomfortable, so... but I love it. It's so fun, especially when it's done well. And, like, I, in my opinion, the monsters will always make a, or break a maze. And if they are excited to be there and they're just having fun, it's going to be a cool maze and it's going to be oh, really yeah. fun. But if monsters are, oh, I don't want to be in this maze. I wish I was somewhere else. Then it kind of, it'll just kill the uh, I should have walked maze. through Dark Entities, like, 20 times this last year just to uh, just to tell them, like, yeah, I'm showing you guys all the love because you guys are leaving Aww. this year. Oh, Man. thank you. I wasn't I'm, I wasn't in there, but I'm glad to hear it, it was getting a little bit more love again. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I love that place. And um, it honestly, I think my time in Dark Entities is actually what got me into Forsaken Lake in 2023. Because um, I didn't find out till later, but I spoke with my manager, who was, um, I forgot his last name, but it was Gabe. And Gabe told me, yeah, so I recommended you to Streets. And he was like, but it looks like you got there. And I was like, oh, I'm like, no. really? Wait, wait, you want to know what's so ironic? I don't think I ever told you this. Your lead, Gabe, mm -hmm. we had the same fucking theater teacher in high school. Oh, no, you told me. I, was like, I don't know if I ever told you that, but it's really dark how I found that out. <laughs> but, it's really dark. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. To oh wait, no, yeah, it was at the yeah, it was at my theater teacher's funeral. <laughs> and point ain't that ironic? And then you ended up in his zone with a funeral procession. Oh. Hey, give me the one come see it's your funeral. It's all adding up now. <laughs> Did it it's go well all last time? Up. But it is all adding up now. It's all making sense. The lines, the butterfly effect, man. It's bam, bam, bam. Right. And now here we are. Yeah. And here so he are. recommended me to for he recommended me to streets, which I thought was wild, being in dark entities. And so I went from a I was the one of the robots. So I had this big, bulky mask, large trench coat, and clothes that like you couldn't tell what what the fuck I was underneath. It was just like. <laughs> Like, just bags of clothes. I could have been a hanger for all anyone cares about. <laughs> um, and then I go then I go to a reaper position that's 
makeup, has a wig, has a fucking short wig, this massive corset, and like a skin tight skirt, and with a butt pad. <laughs> it's like, what the? <laughs> like, what is going on? But I had the same thing because I went from being a robe yeah. fucking mask character to two corset talk. They're like, they're like, get these fuckers out of the mask. <laughs> I'd take one look at it if I was doing that route. I'd be like, it's it's not gonna work out. It's that's just we just need to go somewhere else, a different route, please. Like this is not. We need, we need to change things. It's up. not this gonna is, go around. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So yeah, it's been a travel for sure. Indeed. But no, I, mean, I love it yeah. so much. <laughs> no, it's it's you know it's funny to hear all the mazes that you guys are part of and 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 how many experiences that it's funny every time i talk to people and it's like just thinking back of how many times i've gone to this event over the years and and to be like i probably saw you in that maze and didn't even know it was you you know and like i know you right. for damn i'm for, i know for damn sure you saw me because you can't miss me i'm like practically <laughs> hitting my head all over the damn maze because it's like ducking and shit but you know it, it's so cool to see that um you know we we had we had this question pop up when we were talking about uh getting guests on the show and a lot of people or i had a few people ask about uh like if we do you know just maze monsters and i'm like we do anybody who wants to tell their damn story because it could be outside of not so they they were scaring at like like you said outside on your your front yard on halloween and that's the journey that that built up to where you are now you know, I love hearing the, the early the early stories leading up to where it, where it ends now because it, it's always a cycle of like le- it's a learning curve for everyone. You know, everyone goes like, "Damn, we we started here, and now we're here." You know, and 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 I always tell people, man, I was like, no matter what you're involved with with the fiftieth, whether you were backstage, whether you were a blackout, whether you were um, whether you were on the streets, whether you were in the mazes, you know, no matter what you did, if you were involved with the fiftieth know this you were involved with history and that is for damn sure absolutely no matter where like anyone is or what they were doing it if it wasn't for everyone coming together and working together like we wouldn't have like all these cool mazes and like the people like helping keep it all together and cool zones and awesome like uh line people or blackouts like everyone's coming together to like make it work even like the people like at like some of the consent can um concessions the, concession stands yeah i was like english no i don't english um even the people at the food stands like they were all like they were dressed in character and like they'd be talking in character like they they were like bringing the the whole vibe to life and like really like pulling people into this world of like like welcome to calico kind of thing and i yeah. i love it so much it's so cool so, yeah, so like props fun. to everyone that helped yeah, no, I, I, I can't, I can't give thanks enough to anyone that put a, that was involved with putting that that event together or or working it or you know helping making it function day to day, night to night, you know because mm-hmm. it, it takes a lot of people to to put on a, a big production like this. You know, this is this is huge, and and I have always considered because I I too have a theater background, so fellow thespian, I know it all. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I I know what it's like to put on a, a production uh, as far as a school size goes. But to to put on a production the size of a theme park, you know that that says that's a lot of stress on one person's plate, man. That 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 really and that's yeah. why it's a, a a group of people that 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 you know there's there's all these sub little people that that come into play that help make this all come together and. Yeah, I, I think that's how it was. That's how I felt as a guest with Forsaken Lake this year. There was a crew of you guys that just said, hey, you know what? Like, it's the 50th. Let's make the most out of it. You know, let's tell people, hey, this is the zone you want to be in. This is the zone you want to come in. Let's get people talking on TikTok. Let's get people talking on Instagram of where we are, you know, where everyone should be, you know? And 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 I absolutely just, like I said, I would spend hours just standing there chilling talking with people um then something would just come up in my face and say something and then leave and i'm just like okay um that was cool uh but it it was just fun and then i i i would catch myself watching and this is this is another thing i want to talk to you guys about the procession i mean this was probably by far the best procession i've ever seen going to the event uh it it just felt like it was super full of people um you guys went along with the music so well. What what's it like preparing for something like that? I mean, I know um 
I know you had some damn good leads behind that that led the the, the charge behind <laughs> that. Uh, so what what was it like getting that prepared and and, and being a part of that? Oh, it never gets easier. Uh, doing it it's always too. so nerving. Oh god, it's always nervous. It's always nerving. It's always nerving doing that procession because if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. It goes really wrong. It happened to us on preview night. It day went one day one. Oh, wait. It went. I was there horribly wrong. Oh, so so okay. So here's the thing: we we've, we've <laughs> told people this, and some people didn't realize shit went hit the fan, and some but people shit did hit, hit the, the fan, fan hard. Ooh. At least from our perspective, because I was leading. They're like, Joey, you're the returner. I'm like, what? they're like, you can lead the procession. Oh my god! I was like, well, we're like, you got this, buddy. <laughs> Just so, add out there. <laughs> so yeah, so. The music starts, we start walking, that da -da 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 -da. everybody knows that music by this point. The zone's been around for five years, like, it's associated with the zone at this point. And we're walking down, and this year what was different is, I know Matt has talked about this, I'm sure Lex has talked about this, but when we got to the mausoleum, we would open the mausoleum doors, and the coffin would go inside. That way it made more sense on why a griever came out. Right. So. We get to the mausoleum, and I put my hand on the door. Mind you, there are no handles on this door. And we got these awkward, cotton fingers that, like, extend your fingers. Like, I want to say an extra, like, six inches. Oh, yeah. I was, like, like right. a good solid, like... Uh, I remember like, seeing those. Not short. Yeah. yeah. So, we... It was fuck, but not practical in any way. We go to grab the doors, and then open, and then doesn't move. <laughs> the it's door was locked. From the inside. Oh no. So I look at the pallbearers and I'm wiggling the door like crazy and I'm like, put the coffin down. Put the coffin down. Put it down. <laughs> Drop it. It's not opening. <laughs> and then my ass goes and I spin around and I go run to the back because in my mind, I was like, this griever doesn't fucking know these doors aren't opening. I just think we were stupid and didn't open them. <laughs> so I run my ass back around. And I try to unlock, I go to unlock it, and she's like, it's not opening. I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I go to unlock it. The, the, like, from what I can see, there's like, um, there's like some handles on the inside, um, a bunch of stuff, like, uh, wires and stuff. But there, there's like, a, like a pin lock, and it looks unlocked. And I'm like, okay, it's unlocked. And I wiggle it, and I saw it like slightly open and close. I'm like, okay, we're good. I spin around, go back, and then, I hear later, it wasn't unlocked. There was another latch at the very top. And this little reaver, Becca, who was like five nothing, probably in the fours, <laughs> here, <laughs> reach up there. <laughs> and it was like six feet. So I don't even know what she did. I think she um she uh, shoulder checks the fucking door my, to get it open. Mind you, Becca may look real tiny, but that girl is a bodybuilder. So oh, yeah, she does. She goes to gym. She's a, lot. a bodybuilder. So we're spazzing out, and then all in this one queue, the lightning flashes, and we all snap to look at the doors. And then Becca, in that moment, just goes, fuck it. Boo! And shoulder checks the left door. And only one door opens, and it's just the door on the left. And then Sage and I are on the steps of the mausoleum. So all of a sudden, it's just their fog. And we get blinded. I'm like, it was well, nothing fucking worked. <laughs> and then I just had to like forcefully shut the mausoleum door. And then we just had to so gracefully just hold hands and then walk away. <laughs> you know what? You know what I've been loving the entire time y'all been telling this story is y'all been giving the audience and myself some visuals. And this is probably by far one of the best and funnest podcasts I've had because I don't think I've had anyone. <laughs> I love talking with theater kids. And that's why, because they are like quick with the visuals. And it's like, so we were going to <laughs> me enjoy that story even more was everything you were explaining. You were literally showing me. And I was like, this is freaking one of the funny. I, it, it almost felt like I was there again. Like it, that, that I'm is, glad. I mean, <laughs> I almost want that footage of her going through the door so I can replace it with some wrestling stuff because you know it would be great. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God. Imagine. Just wrestling music. Someone just busting I'm, out I'm the door. We had body cams during that. It's like, oh, oh, oh. 
And then like I the wish. music on the outside, like da da da. Barbie, it'd be it's hilarious. It's so pretty, like, and we're just like, fuck. <laughs> it'd be like hilarious, like do even like a freaking just green screen her and do like a football meme of her tackling somebody or something. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like, oh my god, there's just if someone would have gotten, I, I hope someone out there, if anyone out there has that footage of preview night, um. Just, Oh, someone, someone does. does. Yeah, someone so we're not supposed to. to film on media night, but people absolutely. Someone do. has people. it with the procession. Come on now, if you have oh, it, please sure. share it with the Knights of Horror. DM us. Please. We'd love to see it uh, because there's so many memes that the Forsaken Lake cast will probably make out of this. Oh, um, oh yeah, and, you, oh, and you'd and you'd be goodness. doing the Forsaken oh. Souls a, 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 a justice if you got them that 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 video. Oh. For we, sure. We won't make your out. death miserable. We promise. <laughs> you give us that video, we'll lake. make it quick. They're hanging nice. out in the lake. Come on. We, we They need some entertainment. Come give them the lake, entertainment. Come on. <laughs> but yeah. And then other stuff that we got to do during the procession, because the entire season, the procession evolved and it changed. It was never the same two times in a row. So one of our other Reapers, our other male Reaper, he actually taped Flint on the top of his umbrella and then he would lead and then he would get to the front and then he would spin in a circle and sparks would fly off of his umbrella. So we all started adopting that Flint umbrella thing and we're like, that's cool. And we, then, all got, we all got like honestly we all got really involved with our umbrellas and like we even got like our timing with the umbrellas up like we were all like so in sync and yet like different during that procession um until they broke five of our umbrellas <laughs> and i was about to say and then shit hit the fan again <laughs> so welcome to the shit show for sake and like y'all made it look good then, though it looked so cool. We get paid to make it look pretty. We, we yeah. get paid to look pretty and scare people. So I'm like, I'm not going to complain. But the um, one of the umbrellas breaking, it was Sage leading. Oh my and God. We had an umbrella break on us again. And this is where our iconic waltz comes into play. Because for people who don't know, Sage and I, about halfway through the season, had an umbrella break that she made and she's like joey i'm leading i'm not leading without an umbrella we're waltzing you we said had that it. so much more calmly than how that actually went <laughs> you like we don't have an umbrella no bitch i was like we don't have a fucking umbrella <laughs> <laughs> this bitch fuck it i'm going to screech <laughs> and i'm like i'm like bitch you're gonna teach me how to fucking walk in the back room <laughs> and we're waltzing <laughs> You got it, like, and that's the, where the catchphrase for the tutorial. season Fuck it, we won't. <laughs> that's where Fuck it, we won't came from. And then anytime Sage and I would lead, we would always do this waltz and then just evolved as the season went on. And then it became synonymous with our versions of the Reaper. They're like, oh, those are the ones that dance. So, and we did it the rest of the season. Yeah, because it was just so much fun and I loved it so much. Um, and I don't know how to waltz or dance at all. Never. I took dance classes when I was a kid, but that was like hip hop. <laughs> Not the same hip-hop. thing. Even better. And then there's Can me you imagine? Doing ballroom. Can you imagine the Reapers coming out like shuffling and shit and, and just doing hip hop moves? That'd be <laughs> oh, we have to I'd do that like, one night if we on. go. I gotta Nathan's see. Nathan's gonna be back there. We can do it. Wait, no, he's gonna watch this. <laughs> he's like, promise we're not gonna shenanigans. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Look away, dude. <laughs> oh man. You know that, and that was the funny thing is I would go in that zone and I'd go talk to him every time. Um, I'd be like, "So I was the night go," and he'd be like, "It's a shit show," and I'd be like, "I, I, I you, you handle it very well." I love these. I was like, there was probably it's, only like it's his favorite shit show. <laughs> it's his favorite shit show. We kept him entertained though. So oh, yeah, our respect favorite... to Schmear. Respect to Schmear. <laughs> I've heard about that one. I and I and I've and I just saw him this past Monday, and I didn't say it, but uh, yeah, that that oh. guy. Uh, uh, it, it, what's funny is, um, yeah, I would I would go up to him and he'd be talking to Jeremy and they, you know, they'd be passing each other notes. And then if I didn't see Dieter Man, I'd go up to Jeremy and be like, "Where's the bald guy at?" And uh, he would just straight up be like, "Oh yeah, he's 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 we're we're really busy tonight. It's it's bad." And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna just make a round then." Uh, but there'd be nights I'd go up to him and be like, "So uh, how's it going?" And he goes, "Fuck, man." He goes, these people are driving me nuts. I was like, well, what do you expect? You got to cast it on fire. You're going to hear some, you're going to hear complaints and you're, you're just going to let the other, you're going to turn the other shoulder and act like it didn't happen. 
but yeah. I love him. He's great. No, he's he's. I'm just kidding. No. He's better than that. But he's he's a good, good he's strict, strict but fair. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I love, I love the ringers this no, year. Our, literally, our entire cast goal was to break decent Jeremy at one point or the other, like separately, not as a whole, just break him. You did it successfully, dude. I got them like I got them like three times, and my favorite was when I got them both. I don't. God, no, my. You know why'd you bring this up? My memory forgot it. No, oh because remember God. he told you to sit down, go have a juice box, something. So, so their favorite thing to me was they'd watch me like it'd be like near the end of the night, and I like still had all this energy. I'm like, I don't want to fucking leave the zone. I'm like, I'm still looted. So like I'd start running around like a dog that has way too much energy, and I just want to get rid of it as soon as I can. <laughs> and so I'd bounce around in our favorite little meat grinder area in um, Mission Row, and then I'd come back to where they are, and then Jeremy and Deets would be sitting there like, yeah, look at Sage, she's doing nothing, just sitting around on her ass, being the laziest person we have here in Forsaken Lake. And I kind of went up to them like, like they like they would do this constantly, and like we would clock out, and they'd be like, yeah, you guys are doing terrible. All right, thank you for everything, <laughs> or something. And so I just walked them like, 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 out of breath, just kind of, like, staring at them. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm doing absolutely nothing. I plopped my ass directly on that concrete. Like, no, no slowly getting down. I just went, knees, ass, just straight out, had my legs. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm demonstrating it, but you can't see it. I figured that's um, what you were doing. I saw some leg movement going. I was like, I think there's a demonstration going on again. We just can't see it. You can't, can't see it. I'm, I'm acting like you're here. Um. But no, so my legs oh, flopped funny. out completely. And mind you, I'm in a mermaid skirt where it um it's form fitted up to my until my knee down to my knees, and then it spreads out like like a mermaid skirt. Oh no, shit! <laughs> I've told people sometimes this, and they're like, "What's a mermaid skirt?" What was you wearing? <laughs> Do you need more information? Oh man. Anyway, I love y'all's so, energy. It's probably some of the it's it's great. It, it, I love it. Looks great. What, this is what was happening in Forsaken. Like, I didn't hang out with what you. I need, were you, doing. you two could be my hype people. This is what I need right here. The Knights of Horde. Don't worry, we'll, hype we'll, we'll greatly hype you up. I <laughs> know you will. I know. I'm like, and I want you like uh, you can come in a much looser fit Reaper costume. That way you don't have to feel all squished up in the in the thing. Right. Yeah. Hey, I made it work. I zooted around that place, but I I can't Ooh. wait to not be in that costume. Oh man. Or or if they give it, or if I can get it, I'll rip it to shreds so I can actually move in it. But oh, um, yeah. No, so I sat my ass down on the concrete, and they like I I think I did it so suddenly, and because I have like a bustle underneath my skirt, I kind of just like went straight to the ass, like immediately, like from like standing to ass, and like. It was so sudden. They just stared at me, and they both said, yeah. "And like, yep. I've never seen decent Jeremy break so fast. Like, these had to turn around, and Jeremy was like, like his eyes were like popped. Like, it was so funny. And oh, they were man. like, they were laughing for a good second, and like, I, I was just like." Damn, that's not what I thought would break them, but I'm glad it did. <laughs> and then you just ran up to me afterwards, like I broke, the, I broke our leads, I broke our leads. I was like, and it's time to go, <laughs> and we leave. You guys just hit Defcom. You just finally hit Defcom one. You broke the leads, <laughs> right? Oh man, yeah. I mean, you know, there's just just so many fun. I mean, I I I just. I, I felt abused every time I went to the uh, zone in a good way, if that makes I'm sense. It, it, it was a lot of verbal we abuse. Love but... I mean, um... <laughs> oh man, no, we I love I... hugs. We, we love, love hugs. hugs. We love hugs. No. We love hugs. Oh. It's good at, hey, we're, hey, we're all, we're all, for, we all did improv and theater. Come on now, we know what we're doing. We know, we know, we know when, we know when to, uh, we know when to just touch that line and turn around. I got you. I do the same thing all the time. I love right. doing that. Oh man, it's a little controversy. You know, we love controversy. We love it. Um, no, we but love I, some of it. Yeah, we love it so it much. Keeps things spicy. I does. You, really you. Does. Oh man, I, I feel like you would have really loved. Like, if you just had like a microphone, like if you had like headsets connected to us with like us having microphones, I think you would have really liked to hear some of the shit we've said on stream. Oh. 
Believe oh. me, believe me. Oh. I I uh, I tried my best to get into the Knots Ambassadors program last year, and I had so many plans with stuff like that. And I still have those yes. plans up in here. I just have to. Oh go my to, god! I just have to go to a place that will allow Mike me to do it. Reapers. But no, I want to mic up. Mic up the Reapers with censorships. <laughs> mic up the Reapers with Bro, censors. Oh, uh, you, you didn't hear, huh? Knights of Horror. <laughs> Come on, Knights of Horror is uncensored. <laughs> while we do, while we well, do we play professionalism, I, I would like to work, please. <laughs> and while we do when like I, to do when professionalism, when I retire, then we can try and get me fired. I'm fine with that. Sounds good. I, I I wanted to do it so bad with a lot of people in Ghost Town, specifically Chopper was on that list, and that would have been a lot of fun. But oh. yeah, that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, a virus would have been, <laughs> um, been a lot of fun virus. too. Virus would have been a lot of fun. Mic up virus. Yeah. Yep. Right. Merrick probably would have just blew I, my mic up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I feel, no, like if you, I feel like if monsters were mic'd up, we'd say even dumber shit more than normal, you know? Like it just would heighten it. Oh, oh, it'd be it'd be great. And and you know what too? I've thought about it, especially for like people who are like just solo scares and then like that you could talk, you could see what's going through their mind as they're going for scares and stuff. Like Yeah, that'd out. be so cool. You just like hear them talking to themselves on like what they want to do. Cause like honestly, with how loud music has gotten, especially at not. You could talk, you could have a full conversation with someone, and like someone five feet ahead of you just wouldn't hear shit. Oh yeah, we've had full conversations on streets, because mind you, we were essentially velcro together the entire season. Like from mm -hmm. weekend one, we were walking around together. So that's why we kind of came synonymous together. Even like backstage, we would always be together. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. there's the Reapers. Like, oh, it's not Joey, it's not Sage, oh, there, there's the Reapers. Like <laughs> There was there would be times where we're just like we're tired. We just want an atmosphere, and we would just hold hands and just walk around and, and it works. do nothing else. And it mm -hmm. works. and it works because our characters are pretty and they're intimidating. Like we're intimidating by ourselves. You put both of us together standing in a tunnel. It worked. <laughs> you ain't going around us. You were gonna go back the way you came. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what if I went through you though? That's gonna be oh, my goal next year. Parts. Oh my! Yes. Oh yeah! When people that, tried to go through us, that was so funny. We would literally just. Oh, I would love God. to see that. How you would do that with me? I would just love to see it. It would be like a really tall. Um, you you start to get shorter, sweetie. <laughs> That's true. Well, That's probably just true. Just around the Rosie, just around there, just. The Rosie. <laughs> Let's film it. Oh my be god! Great. Be great content right there. That's that's how the yeah. vlog is starting. Just ring around the Rosie. Be like this happened right. in Forsaken Lake, not clickbait. <laughs> this happened in the like. <laughs> Just, just, we have a video of us playing Ring Around the Rosie and Forsaken. It's on oh, my yeah. Instagram. It's oh, yeah. on my a spinning. I gotta Reaper watch spin. it. I gotta watch yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you after this. Um, Man, you know, yeah, I, I know. I loved it. I, I, I loved it. I, there's just nothing. I mean, that's why I did this month. I had to do this month. I had to give you guys a shine because, you know, you know, I, and I got to thank, honestly, the person I got to thank for kind of waking me up and, and getting these things back again was uh, Ragdoll. When I did the Ragdoll episode, yeah, um, yeah. you know, it, it really woke me up again to be like, fuck, man, I have a lot of fun doing these. And I know there's a lot of stories out there that are still that still need to be told, you know, and, and mm -hmm. who knows? I, I, well, I kind of know. I could see in about a couple more years or even next year, we'll probably even have you guys back on. Let's see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm hearing a lot of rumors this year, uh, you know, and the rumor mill of a certain Forsaken Lake might be on its final year. Nothing's been confirmed. I've just it's been in the rumor mill. But if that you know, okay, if, ain't nothing we haven't heard before. <laughs> yeah, if it is true, you know, we gotta we're gonna give it the proper send off. Indeed. What did what All did right, uh, no for sure the Dead Poet Society? Oh, Captain, my Captain. All right. <laughs> oh, Captain, my Captain. On closing night. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Y'all just get chairs in the middle of the zone. Just bam, salute it. Throw the chairs. Pretty in the lake much, after. yeah. <laughs> that also just eat the chairs. Be in the like lake Nico, after. shoot. <laughs> Pretty uh, much, right? Oh my god. No, but with that being said, like I, I, I just, I, 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 I'm so glad I got to do this and then really talk to more of you guys out there. I don't remember who said it one night either, um, but it was funny because I was walking through Forsaken Lake. We we went to that side through Rope Drop one night, and um. I remember hearing a lot of kids like going, oh, we're going to go ride like, uh, we're going to go ride Accelerator or not Accelerator. That wasn't open yet. Uh, we're going to go ride like Hang Time and shit like that. We're going to go ride, you know, we're going to go ride rides and stuff. I'm like, who the fuck shows up to Not Scary Farm and rides rides? Okay. 
Yeah. You. Oh my god. We had that happen to us one night where there was a little kid. No, there was a woman sleeping on a bench, and I was like, You paid all this money to come to Not Scary Farm, and you're gonna sleep honest, on a like, bench uh, in the Sammy middle of a scare zone. What the hell are Sammy, you doing? Sammy and I used to do that all the time in Ghost Town. But we had passes. Listen, but you guys are regulars. Passes. It wasn't the only yeah. time. We had passes. So yeah, we, we could do that. You guys had passes. You had, you had the pass. <laughs> you yeah, had the pass. That. But people who just show up for one night, I'm like, go get food. Go see a show. Go through a maze. Just sit and watch a scare zone. Don't just don't take a nap. I'm like. Funnel cake. That's all I got to say. Funnel cake. Oh, yeah. The amount of times I recommended people to go get funnel cake, do something at least, was a, so a lot. <laughs> yeah. We loved, I loved bullying everyone in the, um, I loved bullying people in the silver bullet line. That was oh, that time. was funny. Oh, the silver bullet exit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, saw we got in trouble for that one. Joey, I, I actually remember seeing you do a lot of stuff there every time I'd walk by. Like, <laughs> I, I always see you scaring the I shit out of somebody here. One. Yeah, I always Wait, see you guys. Wait, with me or did you get in trouble again? No, I only got in trouble the one time. I only got in trouble the one time, and I know Deese is going to watch this, is because <laughs> what we would do is, obviously, we'd hold hands, and I know you've probably heard about this, but the communication system that we came up with where we would just yes. talk through hand signals. I need to ask about this. This needs to be addressed. The world needs to hear it. How does that... Because the only time I've ever seen that at Haunt was with the two chickens in Ghost Town in 2019, and they talked via Bok Bok. And it made it work. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Um. So the funny thing is, we kind of just started doing it. We ne we have we never, never discussed it. No, we've never, we've never even to like this day. We know what we're talking about with the hand signals, but we've never been like, oh, is this what this meant to each other? Like we just we just know what it's always meant. Um, I think we were trying to figure out when it first started. Yeah, we were talking about it, like, before this, like, when we first, like, were like, oh, yeah, like, we're so down to do this podcast, right. and we knew that we were gonna probably talk about, like, the hand signaling, and we're like, wait, when did that start? And I don't think we ever, like, had a definitive, I don't think we have a definitive day on when it started, it just kind of started developing but i think it actually started with the silver bullet photo exit mm -hmm. because what we would do is we would Break stand there and we would just kind of stare at people and then once people like gathered and got uncomfortable enough we would just i mean go. i am intimidated with you all just staring at me right now like and you're not even yeah. in costume or makeup like that was intimidating as shit <laughs> and mind you i had neon fucking green oh eyes. yeah his eyes yeah. were crazy but oh, man. i think it was just like instinctually we just kind of figured like it's um i guess like i don't want to say common sense because like i like i don't know how to explain it it was just like we wanted to do something and when we felt like a reaction through the hands it was like oh yeah i'm getting the confirmation kind of yeah it's because like sometimes we would just go and then we would go off by ourselves mm -hmm. and then just kind of okay. slowly trickle back together and immediately go back into that position and then the way that we would walk around together is go left Go right. We would use our thumbs. Use I thumb. would be the one driving us yeah. like a fucking joystick. Yeah. Usually, so. usually he would always be the one directing. Um, and then if I wanted to do it, it would be like like down means like this way, up means that, that way. way. Wow. And then if we had someone who was right on our ass, we would just oh, we would swing our arms around because we could hear people walking behind us, and we would kind of like squeeze to be like, "You want to go for that? You want to go for that? Okay, swing." Yeah. Y'all need to. And so we just kind of like would guide each other. <laughs> y'all need to. Y'all need to start your own podcast. This is just. I can listen to you guys talk for hours and explain stories. I really can. Oh, like, I'm thank so you. fascinated thank you. how you guys are explaining all this and how this system came to be. Like, oh my god. Um. Yeah, and we and awesome. we met this year too. This is our first time like ever really knowing each other. I've never oh, met him. Really, in we years. met each other this we met each year other in the orientation parking lot. <laughs> this year, we met each other in the parking lot, <laughs> and you were. Man, that's what's up, though, man. That... We barely met this year. This poor, poor thing. <laughs> she had said in the parking lot, like, "Oh yeah, I'm a reaper in Forsaken this year. I don't know what it is." And he went and like the magical <laughs> R word, and I spawned in within the matter of feet. I heard it as I was walking through Western, and I ran over. I was like, "You're a reaper in Forsaken." <laughs> she was like, close yeah. personal. She's like, "Yes." No, that was when she looked at him and went, yes. maybe. <laughs> Not you going to hide. <laughs> maybe. 
<laughs> and then eventually man? we just kind of started hanging like, out. This was my taking it. And then we eventually started hanging out more and more. And then mm-hmm. I, I kind of explained like what the Reapers are and how like they are the angels right. of death. Oh, speaking of angels of death, we need to tell that story about Talon. Um, oh my god! I know yeah. we have so many goddamn stories. We Jesus, have too Christ. many, we have too many. But um, we were so I ran into them in the Western parking lot, and then I just kind of explained to them like what Forsaken was because. You've already said you really didn't know what Forsaken was, what it was about, what the Reapers were, what the Footmen were, what the Paul Bearers, the monks. Yeah. And then I kind of gave you a rundown of it. And he basically then, explained yeah. like how he's scared and everything. And like he would show his like his posture, his screeches and everything. And like it really just made me all the more hype to go into Forsaken like as a Reaper. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be exciting. And then like, I don't know. It's like Ever since we, like, ever since, like, the day one of us clocking in, like, even for, like, scare, like, not even scare school, it was, like, I think after that, but, like, day one, we just immediately. Procession. Yeah. I think, because we went to go get food after procession, and we were just, like, and it's been pretty, we've been E6000 together ever since, and we've only known each other, I think we calculated it, five months. Yeah. E6000, good reference, by the way. (laughs) Oh, if only. Five if months, only. man. I, I, had I would have know, had I would have not known that, I would have know, I would have guessed you guys known each other for at least high through high school and stuff like that. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's no, how no. well you guys are connected. Like it, I that that's what makes me like to even know that you guys only known each other like five months now. Like that is just insane. Like that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we met each other this season back in August when we started the orientation process for Lahan. Mm-hmm. And then ta-da, here we are five months later and you're still scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> Man, you know, what was yep. funny. Be, you know, when I told, when I told Dietz, I was going to have you two on the podcast. He's like, make sure Sage talks more than Joey because she's, she's a little shy. And I'm like, I, 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 I don't think that's the issue. I, I just, I, they have so much to say that they want to, they want, they, I mean, they just agree. Like I said, I wouldn't have believed you guys only known each other for five months. You guys are like so perfect of like showing the visuals and explaining. Like it is just, I, this is probably the most fun I've had doing a podcast in a while. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah. Get the trophy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Get the trophy. It's because of the lighting. <laughs> well, I mean, we got the lighting. We got the energy. I'm like, oh, it's the man. mood setting. <laughs> it is. It really is. This is a vibe. Y'all, y'all are a vibe for sure. For sure. <laughs> Welcome to the lake, indeed. Um, no, and I and I remember when I back to that when I was saying though is I remember though that when I said I was like I was the, someone passed me and goes why do you come to knots and I was like literally for this event this is the only reason why I come to knots is for this event I was like I don't come during the day like this is the event that I come to like I I love not scary farm and she's like oh that was very nice of you to say that and then she just ran away. It was, it was it was Damn, a monster she and, and forsaken too. She went, a, That's very sweet, Bridge. <laughs> no, oh, that might have been Sarah. No, that okay. might have been Sarah. Like Sarah, we like. <laughs> I just walked away, and I was like, "Okay, I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm gonna go walk no, the rest of your zone." That was Sarah. That's that was like Sarah. Sarah. No, it but that's great. like that's so sweet. It's like yeah, because like Scary Farm is like such like a vibe and such a family and once you start to like learn who's working there it feels like a community eat whether you're a monster or you're like a guest that just comes here just for fun it's like you really get involved and like like you just delve into like the whole thing and like even this year of me being like my first year on streets i've met so many people in different zones mazes i've met so many like common guests that come here frequently it's been awesome seeing everyone and like it really is like what i feel like ties like the knots community together and then like it drags people interested in normal knots as well but mm-hmm. it's like scary farm is like just a whole different breed for um, sure scary farm is a different breed of you too no yeah it's i love it so much and it's like it's totally understandable to just oh, yeah. come here just for the people and the community and just how not scary farm is in general. Yeah, it's just fun. Overall, so fun. KSF is just fun. Even if you go and just sit in a scare zone and just watch, it's yeah. just fun. 
to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. No, and and that's why, like, I always say, like, I wish I can clone myself to be, like, multiple zones at once because, like, I feel like there's just so much to see in a given night that you can't be there for all of it. There's, like, everyone's doing their thing, you know, and that's what I love about, that's what I loved about, you know, all these zones this year and and this year, this last year in general with, with Scary Farm. It was, it was really, like, because everyone that was involved there knew it was the 50th, they brought out an energy unlike anything I'd ever seen, you know, and, and, you know, it, it was like they worked with what they had. Everyone was was hitting their points and 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 hitting what they needed to hit. And and it, the the vibe and the energy was just there. Like, I can go on and on, and we can share all the stories we want about Not Scary Farm. <laughs> but the truth be told is, you had to be there. There's just no way around it. You had to be there. Like, it, you no, know, for sure. It, That's the so truth. Much. Yeah. You know, I watched so Especially many. Especially for the 50th. Oh, yeah. 50th yeah. for sure. Especially for the 50th. That was like, a year, like, you just had to be there to see it. Like, yeah. with Goring, Gauntlet, Ghost Town, like, having, like, these special moments that are happening. It's like, like it made yeah. the whole, it made Not Scary Farm feel like a world and you're traveling through it. I think, like. I, I I haven't been to Knott's probably as much as, like, some people who've been here for, like, 20 years. But it definitely was, like, a strong year for yeah, Scary I mean, Farm. Yeah. And and it can only go up from here. And, like, there's always, like, things to test out, things to do. The Lantern now being involved and that not being directly with 50 year. I'm, like, I'm excited for that to potentially come back and bring more life to the monsters and the zones in general. And even the mazes, too. That's, Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get my I gotta get my lantern batteries changed so I can have that ready for next year for sure. Um, I need to get sure. my lantern fixed in general because my button does not work. Because <laughs> oh, no. No. I can break it. I didn't break it. I I unfortunately got one of the defective batch oh. ones, and I went eventually the button on the thing just stopped. Not. So they get stuck. Yeah, they yeah. just stop clicking. So if anyone from management watches this, if you could just switch it to like. A click where you just twist it back and forth. Just make it a knob. Please. That would make life so much easier. (laughs) I think. 100%. There not it like the button on the side and the one underneath? The one underneath is the one that changes the colors and makes it interactive. The one on top, the one that's supposed to be like the knob that you click, that's the one that actually turns it on and off. The one that turns it on and off is the one that broke. I kept pressing the wrong button on on people's lanterns. I wouldn't go. Did you? Well, because I would turn it off and turn it back on again, and then it would make it interactive. And I was like, "Each work." <laughs> hey, it's like Joey. Was, Joey just, just gave us a, a the more you know moment. You know what I mean? Like now we know we got. I didn't have to explain the lantern. Joey did that make for that me. Make that into a freaking gift. Just the reapers. You Wait, know, no, no, no. We go like this. <laughs> oh, next year I'm getting footage of that just so we can make it into a gift. I'm like oh, you two. Follow me real quick. <laughs> I'm like, follow me real quick. We got to film something. Um, there you go. I'm like, we'll be in the zone at this time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? I think. Yeah. If, if. Oh, I don't know if we can say that. Never mind. <laughs> well, Shit. I was going to say, if, if Forsaken is coming okay. close to it's like ending years, I know a lot of people in Forsaken Lake are for sure coming back next year in 2024. Well, I guess this year in 2024. And I know a lot of them would love to give it a, like, a proper send off for when it does oh, go, yeah. and like everyone's excited. Like it's a, we were all like, we need to get photos, footage. We just need to like, like as much as we can of this zone before it leaves us, and like just cement ourselves right. into this place. Yeah, because what's really sad about sometimes about Forsaken is there's just not enough coverage of that zone. There's yeah. not enough pictures. There's not enough videos, and there's so many special moments that people miss. Just because, like Sage said way early on, there's really not a reason to walk through there sometimes. You just have to either want to go there or you happen to stumble into our humble little cemetery in the middle of the park. Yeah. Indeed. No, for Indeed. sure. I think that next season, I'm going to make it a mission to at least spend two hours there every single night that I go to the event. Aww. And just get free. Yeah. 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 That'd be a lot of fun. We'd love that. Um, yeah, I know. I know a lot of our friends. Some of our friends are even photographers and um, people in Forsaken Lake who like know photographers or are photographers. Just they want to just like either paying someone or just really like getting out there and like wanting to get some nice photos where like we can help the photographers with their time and like actually give them the money they deserve and also like 
just giving like the um forsaken its proper send off and because like sometimes with those photos you need like with how dark that area is because it's dark yeah, in the lake sometimes you need sometimes. like you need like people to stay still or be like developing or like the, the right moments to happen in the right places so it can be difficult but yeah we're we're all excited times. no matter what i was honestly surprised how many photographers or photographers did get photos of us this year like we got a lot i was like holy crap like first week i got like a really nice photo and i was like what the fuck did i do that <laughs> he was like, what is that? oh, oh no, my I goodness mean, i got jump scared by that <laughs> it was funny because like no you guys like yeah and there is some moments of that zone where it is really dark but if you go down mission road right there there are some good mm -hmm. moments where the light really shines at certain spots um yeah buddy, it can be so pretty too yeah and, and my buddy rob the howling hour he would go and and take some photos and and um Man, I mean, that guy is getting so talented of what, what he can work with. But, you know, it, it's, it goes the same thing with filming, too. Like, I'm always trying to mm -hmm. find what's the best low light camera in the market just so I can capture these moments like crystal damn clear, like so people can see it. But I, I feel like it's been getting better and better every year that we we come out with some new equipment. Um, so we'll see what happens mm -hmm. next year. I, I, next year, what I want to do next year is is play with this lens a little bit more. And this is a fisheye lens, um, a wide. Oh wide yeah. Lens. So the, Ooh, the, shiny. Yeah. The, the plan was last year that I wanted to make compilation videos that kind of looked similar to like the old school, like early two thousand skateboarding videos. Um, oh, that'd be great. Oh, that'd oh, my be goodness. cool. Yeah, and I want to do something like that hasn't been done in a long time. At least it hasn't been done with the haunt scene yet so um yeah that'd yeah. be awesome a lot, a lot a lot planned up here trust me and a lot that we on the big noggin a lot the lot we want to do so now now we're looking now we're in we're in month two of 2024 um you know the road to I, I almost said the road to WrestleMania. That's how much of a wrestling fan I am. The road to not scary farm 20, 24 which is basically your guys' WrestleMania what are we what are we thinking are we, i mean I, it sounds like i already i think i already know the answer you guys want you guys want back in the lake and, and joey wants to go three time mm -hmm. i need to and, get that third year that third year for sure and sage that would be a, a two time for you then yeah for sure i i would love to get more into the reaper zone and like honestly forsaken lake is such a like loving family like i feel like i was truly blessed for my first zone ever at knots to be forsaken lake because it really like let me like cement myself in the zone and then get to know everyone individually and just like just love on everyone work with everyone get to scare with everyone oh it was so much fun. same here because when i auditioned in 22 forsaken was my absolute dream zone i was like Forsaken is just such a pretty zone. And I didn't know about it until 21 when I was in Mesmer. So when I walked through it in 21, I was like, this zone is stunning. I want to be here. I want to do this. And I don't know who it was, but one of the Reapers from 21, I saw one of them just shoot across the zone. And it was a male Reaper. And he just disappeared into the fog. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that was, but I want to be that. That was cool and then so i put on my paper when i went into auditions in 2022 i'm like i want to be in forsaken lake and then two weeks later i got a call and they're like they want you to be in forsaken lake and they actually want you to be a reaper and i was like i got my dream role in my dream zone my first year on streets fuck yeah <laughs> this achievement unlocked right there that's what happened and oh yeah and that then... was the achievement unlocked yeah. moment i was like yes yep. yes 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 you just hear the, yeah. you just hear the xbox <laughs> <laughs> oh man um right so no, really, it'd be yeah. it'd honestly be a crime if we didn't come back. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we no, did. Yeah. if we did. I I would honestly be very sad if a lot of you guys didn't come back because like I'm I, and I know there's people that that want to take they got they got eyes for somewhere else maybe they got a character involved for someone else for and sure. I, I and I respect that but there was just something about this last year that I'm just like I really hope next year they it's just like this because this was a lot of fun like I'm looking forward to it I can guarantee you right now it's gonna be at the top of the of the hype list this year I can promise you that oh, at least on my end um, I don't know about mm -hmm. Sammy Sammy probably will too because Sammy is the one that really brought brought it up but i don't know man there's just there's something in the future that i can see that this is going to be a good year and if it is it's last year if it's you know the rumors are true then you know we give it the proper send off it deserves and uh, i can't wait to see mm -hmm. you guys return as the reapers because you know that's just that's a a dynamic deal i don't think the world wasn't ready for 
but damn it. Yeah. Did you I don't come think by either of us were ready for it either. It just kind of happened. Mm-hmm. It, it was just like, oh, wait. I didn't, we didn't even realize that we were running together so often. And we were just like, oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> like, oh, man. So I expect a, yeah. a podcast in the future of uh, the Reapers podcast um, coming soon to all platforms. Oh, my that... goodness. Imagine. The Forsaken Tales, podcast. Tales of the, Re- Tales of the Reapers. Are, I, uh, right. Oh, instead of Tales from the Crypt, it's Tales from the Lake. Yeah, there Tales you from go. the Lake. There it is, man. That was that was our that was part of our branding for this 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 month, man. Tales from the Lake. I love it. Tales I love from it the so lake. much. Now, and the Joey and Sage, uh, I I I uh, I have to again one last time uh, before we 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 cut off the air here. But I have to thank you guys so much. Um, not only for for proving the Knights of Horror wrong and in uh the hype list but for making forsaken like a very memorable one this season thank you for um of course being on the show and and you know ex- helping express that love to the fans that who love this zone who love this event uh and who love this show which i don't know if a lot of people like this show but you know it is what it is um but no, I I, I really just want to thank you guys because uh, this has been a very fun month for me um and you know it's just really I'm excited to go on to now March, which I can finally announce is going to be Goring 20s month. Um, so <laughs> take a trip down yeah! memory lane and uh, we're going to go. we're going to hear some stories. We got uh, one returning and three brand new people coming on the show for the first time ever. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to have a, a fun time, a trip down memory lane with the Goring 20s. Um, but for be fun. Lake, Y'all, you're all the ones that kickstarted this this monthly theme that I want to continue going. I, I'm even I'm even starting to plan uh, in April now, which you'll you'll hear very soon. I'll tell you guys after the end of the show. Um, oh, wonderful! But we'll yeah. keep our mouths sealed. There, <laughs> we yeah. hear nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, but yeah, Goring Twenties Month that starts next week on the channel. Uh, well, future. Mm-hmm. We filmed this in the past. This is, this, that's how that's yeah. how these things work. You know, that's just. It's that's, fine. That's, it happens at the lake sometimes. That's production. It's fine. Time is a you know. social construct. Yep. Yeah, it's just that's how production works. Um, but next week uh, we start the Goring Twenties Takeover uh, with our very first guest, and I and I'll announce it here. Um, my good friend, part of the QM Slider team, Nameless, uh, his first year. <laughs> on Why? the Goring 20s. I can't wait to talk to him about that and uh and That's talk gonna to him be about so the team, much fun. all that stuff. So, yeah, take a trip down memory lane with the Knights of Horror, but uh for the Forsaken takeover, I want to say thank you to everyone that was involved with it um who helped bring it to to life. I really appreciate all the guests I had from um to Matt, to Lex, Sage, Joey, you guys were all legendary this year. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. Um, and to all the fans who wanted um, more Forsaken Lake people, thank you guys so much for for for, for choosing the Forsaken Lake as as, as such interest. Um, we still got tons more to go. Uh, and we are going all the way until Haunt starts. So be ready. And we're, we are slowly, uh, we got a couple episodes away. Episode 200, Mindless Horror Podcast. I can't believe we've done 200 episodes. That is getting insane to even think about. That's awesome. Uh, Who will be on the show? I don't fucking know yet. I am still trying to figure that out. But bear with me. Someone amazing. (laughs) I'm hoping to get someone like out of this world but you know i'll, I'll settle with with to me out of this world is, is scare actors so i mean I'll, I'll settle with anyone at this point you know Girl, we're out of this world <laughs> exactly there it is i actually might have a little, little we're little, still out of this world we're straight into the lake <laughs> there it is into the lake that's why out yeah, of the world into the water exactly it's a, it's a vibe <laughs> down there i heard it's a fun time always welcoming Rich. It's very moisturizing. <laughs> very, very moist. Very moisturizing indeed. Um, very moist. Very moist. I know a lot of people very like moist. Are moist. A lot that 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 moist word is. like freaks a lot of people out. I just it drives me. It, it makes me laugh every time. It I does. Say it, is, uh, I yeah. loved saying that. Moisture around here. Yeah. It's very nice and moisty. Moist, moisty. Oh man. So. Final question, hardest question, probably on the channel, on the on the podcast we usually have. Sage and Joey, what is your favorite scary movie? Oh, first of all, I am hanging up the fucking phone. <laughs> nope, <laughs> I've seen enough scary movies. I'm good. There it is. Sage, I'll let you go first on that one. <laughs> hey, he said, he started talking. He said Sage and Joey, so. He- 
Sage first. Um, the only reason I know this answer is purely because my job requires me to have a favorite film so that they can put it on the little plaque. Um, but I think it's um, it's called uh, like the site. It's I forgot what it's called. This a silent, the silent movie. Um, it's your favorite horror movie, and you forgot the name. But I will choke you out. <laughs> there's, um, there's two I'm thinking of right now, and I think it's the first one. Is it a quiet place? A quiet place. There, where it is. Okay. I, I, listen, I was thinking. My my brain went to anime by accident. I was like thinking a silent voice. I'm like, that's not a horror film. <laughs> I, the other one I was like, saying was Silence of the Lambs, but I was like, it's got to be one of the two. Yeah, that's a good one too. I can't remember if I've seen that one or not. <laughs> Don't dare. <laughs> um, it's a, a but yeah, marathon. There you go. But yeah, I love the Quiet Place. Uh, very it's good film, and I I like. I don't know. I, Sign language has like a soft spot in my heart and like their usage of it and both in the first and I think I can't remember if there's two or three films. I think they're coming I think out with the third. Three. Yeah. Working on but throughout all their films. Yes, I got it. We gotta go see it. Um a but quiet place no. day one. We're gonna all see how it started in New York. Yes, that'd be fun. We have a mar- we should have a movie uh movie night. Man, hey, you got you got my my girl Lupita in there from us, and you got my boy Eddie Munson in there, and I'm ready. I'm let's do it. Let's go. That'd be awesome. But yeah, yeah. good film. Definitely recommend watching, and it's very, very, very thrilling for sure. John Krasinski, oh, that man, that's fun. that's the Office right there, and that the, the guy who played Jim on the Office directed and wrote all those movies. Yeah, Can you that? I heard that. It was so funny. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. I am I am a whore for a good slasher movie. So um God. Yeah, so which one? <laughs> I know. I'm like, which one are you a real whore for? Either Scream or Nightmare on Elm Street. It's between one of those two, but I think I might have to stick with Scream. Just good classic. Oh <laughs> God. I the revival oh, it's just, horror right there. Ooh, it's such a good slasher. And I remember watching that the first time and being like, I've got trust issues now. I'm never picking up a random phone call ever again. And then you got me. I'm your trust issue. (laughs) (laughs) I abused this poor child at my work. (laughs) Hide your tasers. Oh, Oh my God. Wow, there we go. Oh, man. Yeah, Scream, Quiet Place, both great choices right there. Um, Ghostface, legendary. Mm-hmm. Ghostface. We'll see what happens with Scream 7, if it ever happens now. Um, if it ever happens. But you know what? I don't care how bad it is. Listen, I, not, not I, like bad horror, I like bad horror movies, too, so I'll still go watch it. Honestly, bad horror films are kind of like a good, like, funny classic. I don't know. They're just always great sometimes. Hey, buddy. <laughs> see, I would say probably... One of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. Two of them. Halloween Ends and The Exorcist Believer. Oh. Um, Jesus. Y'all are so on point with everything you do. It's just, it's hysterical to me. I love it. (laughs) I had the Reaper brain. It's the Reaper brain. It is. My, My brain cells were at least two. And now one of them is gone and the other's in half. <laughs> and this one took the other half. Oh man. Now you got now you got two. Now he's making his own he's a, he's making his own Frankenstein's monster. That's what he's doing. It's alive. Right? He's like, I need friends. <laughs> <laughs> With our brain cells, it's not going very far. We're losing friends. Oh <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll go to boing boing. I'll go to boing boy. <laughs> For anyone that wants to keep up with you guys throughout the year, especially following you guys on your haunt journey, if you guys have any public social media, uh, do you guys have uh, anywhere they can follow you guys at, or are we keeping everything anonymous? Yes. So I actually just started a haunt account, so you can find me at creepy underscore catawampus on Instagram. Sage. Um. So originally I had my account private because I was just adding... Um, people that I met through Haunt or anything like that onto it. But I kind of like recently made it public and I might keep it public. So, um, or if like you seem familiar, I'll probably just end up like letting, adding you kind of thing. Um, but you can see me on Instagram at sage.size, uh, which is my last name, just cut in half. So it's just S Y T H E. Um, so yeah. You have Scythe in your last name, you end up playing a Reaper. 
It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Right. Meant to be. Yep. It was meant to be in her. In her. Like in her history. Um. What are the the the, the transcripts in her history transcript? Oh yeah. It, as it's writing, it says, "Will be casted in Forsaken Lake because of last name." Right. They were like, That's what was it? That yeah. was it. There it is. That was right it. there. Nothing. Signed in ink. They were like. Away. Pretty much. Yep. That was it, man. Uh, well, I, I again, I want to thank you both so much for coming on the show. I am so glad we had a, a, an amazing conversation. You guys are always welcome back on the show. Um, and again, uh, thank you guys for making Forsaken like in a memorable one for the 50th. Uh, I, I had a blast and I cannot wait to see what happens for, for 51. And here we go. Um, and by the way, uh, a thank big you, shout Jeremy. out. Thank you guys for uh, also being part of that younger generation that's going to be that next generation coming in with Haunt. I think it's awesome. You guys are killing it out there, and I cannot wait to see what other talent come in the door for the first time ever, uh, either on streets and mm-hmm. maze, wherever you end up. I cannot wait to see it. There's always someone that uh, is ready to to step in for those who are um, finally hanging it up. So I, I'm so excited to for see what sure. one holds. There's probably going to be a ton of new people this year. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We're so, we're so excited for 51 year. Like it's going to be chaotic and fun at the same time. There's going to be, yeah. I feel like it's going to be a lot, a lot of new, like a lot of new faces. Yeah. A lot, a lot of new, new faces, faces and a lot of new scares and just more new things for people to try out. And it's going to be so much fun. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Well, With all that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure to smash that like button. Leave some comments down below for my friends, Joey and Sage. Let them know you love them. Show them them some Reaper love. You know, I mean, after this episode, you cannot not show them love. These guys, they're they're amazing. (laughs) They're amazing. Um, But if you guys want to take it a step further, follow us on all of our social medias linked down below. With all that being said, uh, we will see you guys next week for a trip down memory lane for Goring 20s month. Stay spooky. We love each and every one of you. Peace and love. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.